Please podcast. I wonder if you'll get this. I'm on the highway heading west with. Cause I can't get you out my soul. Why don't you come over and talk about everything? They don't wanna do this anymore, anymore, no. My life's been boring and I'll forget everything. I don't wanna do this anymore. Cause I can't go back To what we never had And I can't go back Cause nothing ever lasts And I can't go back I'm on a high chasing any direction Cause I can't go back Making a song from scratch. All right, Chuck. But I keep running and running away, running away, running from you. interview sorry this is my first interview ever yeah are you nervous um i i honestly didn't even read the questions to be honest that you sent me i was just like you know what i'm just gonna rip it and like see what comes ahead because I, I don't want to like get like psyched way. out or anything like that you know yeah um sorry i'm just gonna also stop the mic but yeah, I think that was probably the best. Like, honestly, I sent it mostly out of, um, I think like sometimes people might be a bit more nervous about it and seeing it might be easier if they have like sort of an idea. But um, I think most people would prefer like just going straight for it. It's yeah, like, I just like, said, I just said it's, really, it's kind of like creating music. Um, cool. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to say like, thank you for like the opportunity because, you know, this is kind of a, side thing it's also like out of passion it's not really anything i get paid for um also because it's such a small listening group at the moment um but yeah it's um it's kind of what i'm really interested in just like learning a lot of, about different topics but also music wise i love like finding people on instagram or like just people you don't usually maybe like know where to find and um that's how yours came up and i was just like oh that's cool um it's interesting that the algorithm though usually promotes like random songs so like the one that they promoted to me was um life's been boring yeah and, for sure oh that's new like really new but then like when you actually look into the like the spotify you're like, oh it's been out for a while actually yeah it's been like so it's more to, than a year now which is crazy yeah maybe it's to give you um like some room space to explore you know like oh there's a few more to listen to yeah definitely yeah. definitely um so i was gonna ask you about um because you when i messaged you you were actually on holiday right you went for a vacation yeah honestly bro i i travel so much that yeah. that i didn't even i don't even know where i was when oh you know where i was i was in uh i was in italy for my for my cousin's wedding honestly so that was that was pretty dope so i was just like i was like it, you know it was a while ago but that's why that's i was like unresponsive a bit too yeah is that far like traveling from the u.s i don't travel much so. yeah 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 it's probably like uh nine nine hours or something like that but i went for it was really cool like we had a great time and it was my whole family was there so it was like a destination wedding and it was like the first wedding of like my cousins pretty much so it was like really cool honestly we, we had a great time um have you been there before or first time 
I've I've been there before. Yeah, my my family is like a bit Italian, like some of my uh my on my dad's side. So um, he like you know our our grandpa's from there, so he took us around and whatever. It's cool. Uh, I like Italy a lot. And my girlfriend is Italian, so like I uh, so I went with her and her family too, which is actually really cool because they're like actually Italian and not just like you know <laughs> like. And you have like someone essentially like I guess. I mean, she's lived there partly before, or like yeah, she like she lived there up until she was like thirteen or something like that. So she's like actually Italian, and yeah. her family's like you know her family actually has accents and stuff like that. You know when they speak and whatever. So yeah, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah, I'd agree. Awesome. Yeah, no, their food is unbelievable. It's yeah, they have so many interesting pastas that even like you see right now, people are starting to talk about like the things that we don't even know mainstream wise. I guess. For sure, for yeah. sure. Oh, nice. So you travel a lot, Ben. I mean, flying wise, you must be pretty um, used to it. Like all the flying. I'm like literally, like I don't. I'm just always traveling. Um, just either because of music. Um, my girlfriend also lives in California, so I go back and forth from 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 Miami to San Diego a lot. Um, like every two weeks, and then uh, I just I'm always like meeting up with like producers or something like that in like nashville or like california like i'm going to la in like a week to go meet up with this producer so i'm just always doing shit like that or like filming content or whatever it's it's always just just moving around doing a bunch of shit honestly yeah. i assume also for like filming music videos you probably also have to go to certain locations you've got like a few clips for like your work um and it looks like the locations are always kind of more chosen as well. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of that. Honestly, I'm very like just last minute and on the fly, and I'm so I'm trying to get better at that and like be more um, be more um efficient on like and like more um, I don't know what the word is, but like more direct, like more like um. Like, like know what know what I'm doing like before I uh before I do it, and so I don't really uh, as, as what you said like lining up your schedules and destinations to see yeah exactly and that's something like, me and my manager have been like working on a bit like because I'm someone that I'm just so last minute and like you know like this music this music game is like a full on you know it's a full on business so like you have to kind of treat it like a business and. You know, I'm always just like working, like I'm working, like I work like 12 to 15 hours a day, probably Um, some That's days, cool. some days I'll work like three or four hours and just like need a break or whatever. But like some days I'm working like 12 to 15 hours on like content, like all this stuff, like, you know, it's just a lot sometimes. So yeah. it's always <laughs> you find like um the travel also helps with that in the sense that you kind of have to get up and go somewhere and it breaks it up for you so you're not just kind of sitting there and like kind of forget to like go out and breathe some fresh air yeah for, for sure it definitely helps change the perspective like i was in uh for the fourth of july i was in uh, uh north carolina it's like another state in in america i don't yeah, know if you're from carolina with it, but... that's one that i actually know <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I was there and uh it was like a nice place to like make some music because it was like a change of scenery for sure. Mm. So it's cool. Like I, I like doing that and bringing I always bring like my equipment with me. So I just wherever I am, I just go and make music. It's a little bit hard in terms of like schedule because like my schedule's always messed up with like the time changes and stuff like that, or like or just like, you know, in different places, you have different habits, but um, I try to keep like on schedule, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty like, I need like a schedule every day kind of thing to like operate, <laughs> you know? Um, I was going to ask because of all that, like traveling and bringing your equipment, obviously you were kind of like touched on that, but like, so obviously traveling to different places give you a lot of inspiration. Um, do you find like, they kind of inspire you in a certain way? Is it like the change or is it like, like what tends to happen for you? Um, I do, I do think so, but not in the way that like most people think like, oh, like I go to this place and like makes me think of something. Like, I mm -hmm. think that just a lot of times I'm making music like in my bedroom yeah. and like when you're in the same place, like I feel like energetically, 
um, you kind of just tend to do the same things. So um, like you kind of just draw the same inspiration or like you kind of get stuck in like these cycles of like the same thing. So a lot of times, like when you go somewhere new or you do something different or you're recording in a different place, a lot of times I'll just kind of, I'll lock in differently. So I'll, I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll just draw inspiration from like, from, from the view or whatever. And it'll be, it'll, it, it won't be like the, the place makes me think of something different. It's more like, it's a different vibe. It's a different energy. So it's like, it feels, um, it feels a bit, uh, more, uh, you know, it feels cool. And like, it's always a good way to just, you know, change up the vibe, I guess. If it's a bit like, um, shifting perspectives, right? I guess. Like, For um, sure. like if you're sitting in your bedroom, you might not consider a certain thing, but then talking to certain people, just a random conversation, maybe you might pick up on something and it might just make you think about something differently and then think, oh, that's an interesting topic. Well, like, interesting way to look at things i guess for sure no 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 i i definitely agree to that 100 percent. yeah that's really cool um so i did like initially when i found you i was reading up on your um spotify uh like info you know like the little splurge um mm -hmm. cause, like it's interesting to see what artists is right usually it's just more like um i found it most interesting because a lot of them are usually a bit more like third person kind of like someone else talking about them but yours is like a lot more personal than like a lot of the ones i've read so far um yeah it just seemed like someone was having a chat pretty much um yeah. but i thought it was really interesting um because for you you were originally you were originally like doing something that was completely different and you mentioned that like you kind of then realized that it wasn't exactly what you wanted um so i'm assuming like it wasn't very fulfilling but you were kind of only starting to kind of figure it out back then um, yeah. what'd you say uh, how long ago was that like when you were kind of like just that was like there was like a year period of time where i was just like um where i was like debating whether or not to start releasing music because it's a very overwhelming feeling because one thing I'm, I'm a big, um, I'm an introvert. So I don't really like to be like showy like that on the internet. And I don't like to be like my face everywhere and stuff like that. So that was something I always had to deal with. Um, and something that like, I always feared. I, I had like, like when I even made, like no one knew I made music, like before I like posted it on my Instagram, I was like terrified. And I remember I was with my girlfriend and her sister and I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And I like posted it. Um, and my hands were like shaking because I was so nervous. Like, like I'd never done anything like that. Yeah. And so before, um, before making music, I was, I was actually, uh, I was just working, uh, for, I was working for my dad, uh, for about a year um in real estate and mm -hmm. i started i started doing that with him um and then i started my own business um about a year after working with him um and so that started uh to be kind of successful thank god not how it was and so yeah so that that floated me for like the period of time where my music was not really like making any money or anything like that uh, was, it, and, was it related did you say or same area? what'd you say was it same um was it real estate or like yeah yeah it was real estate so i'm i'm an owner like operator i own my own like uh properties down in in, in florida i was gonna um, say that's so really good for owning a property but at least that's yeah good. no for sure so it was uh it was a cool transition um and it it allowed me i it allowed me the freedom to kind of uh you know uh, give me time to, to, you know, get good at, you know, releasing music, you know, build up a catalog of music and actually like, you know, do it consistently. Um, and so I, I was working for my dad, um, and while also like having my own kind of business going on my own, uh, you know, stuff. And it was hard because, you know, just from like when you have like a family business and like also I'm the I'm the only boy and whatever um and and you know I have like three little sisters yeah and so it was really hard for me to like also just tell my dad like listen like I want to I want to like I'm going to come back to this at one point but I want to um I want to make music and he was super supportive 
But I remember like I, I was so scared to even just tell him that. Um, and I was like, like 100% going to do it. Um, and I was freaking out. Like I was having like panic attacks and whatever. And I remember I was, I picked him up from the airport, um, and I drove him home and I had like a full presentation about how I was going to do it. Like literally a plan, like to explain it to him. And like, and I was like, uh, didn't say a word on the drive. Cause I was so nervous just thinking about it when we got back and we got to like my my dad's house and i remember um i remember i was like dad and he's like what he's like what's up he was like looking at me like because like i was just like i had like tears in my eyes and i was just like um i was like listen and like i told him and i was like i have a plan and i just immediately started crying and like i was like you know because i it's hard because i didn't want to let him down or anything like that um because it was just like I had been, you know, it was just like the, like I was working for him and the plan was to just work for him for the rest of my life, I guess. And like, I just didn't want to let him down like that. So even now it just kind of gets me a bit emotional, but, um, it was, he was totally like, uh, cool with it. And like, he was like, do you, he was like, do you like, don't worry, like you're, you're fine, like whatever. But it was, it was still very hard for me, like mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, and so after that, I was like, I was like, I have to make the music work kind of thing. Like I have to, because, you know, I don't want to, yeah, I, I don't want to like, not, I don't want it not to work and like me waste all this time and whatever. And so after that, I was like, I'm fully fucking committing to this. And yeah. so I committed to it and uh, I released a new song every two weeks, even when I was like rushing to release a song. Like I, I, I always had like, I never had the next song ready. I always had to like finish it the week before. Yeah. And I just was like, I'm going to figure it out. And like, thank God, knock on wood, it's been great. And I'm like still figuring it out still, but like, um, yeah, man. And that's, I don't, yeah. I forgot what the, what the question was, but like, that's kind of like a bit of the first that's story. Brilliant. That's, really, that's really amazing. Cause like, that's a thing that I brought up in like my other interview as well. And I thought it was a really interesting question because um, obviously internet makes things really different and then as like social media is becoming like more and more prominent that really changes like how people approach music and also how like, much extra work actually you have to do like yes it's easier in a way to connect it also seems like there's like at least three or four platforms you have to manage at the same time right and that's kind of yeah. why like, people do still eventually might need like an assistant or like a manager or someone to produce like certain parts of the aspect um uh but like nobody ever talks about like how many people who are producing music and performers that actually might inertly be more introverted. And it's it's such a huge step. Like I asked my last interview, I said, like, do you sing in the shower? And he's like, no, I'm way too subconscious. And I'm like, that's crazy, right? Like, like as a person who's like recording all this music and has done shows here and there, but like or performed in front of people, but you're like, I, I can only sing in the shower and nobody's at home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but like yeah, it's definitely a big thing. And I think for you, it, it it's very challenging because you're when you live a lifestyle a certain way and then you have to like realize that it's not fitting in. It's like a very strange feeling. And then you kind of have to shift things completely. And it's not even necessarily about like say like if it's fulfilling goals or certain ways, if you're just comfortable, but then you suddenly feel like you're gradually feeling like emptied out a little bit. It's a very, um, I'd say, like, damaging thing in a way because, like, you don't really know what's going on. And then that sense of, like, loss, I think, is a lot of where, like, existential crisis or mid-30s kind of crisis kind of comes from. Um, mm -hmm. People have it at different ages, right? Um, but that's good. Um, so when you started creating, I wanted to ask you, like, um, when you were creating music, um, so when you started figuring things out, you got the support of your dad, did you know, like, exactly what you liked already like were you because you were obviously producing stuff behind the scenes and not sh like sending it out to the world but did you have an idea of like what genre you liked already and or was it more like just playing around and really doing whatever you felt like in the beginning it was just more about figuring out the sound yeah. um i literally uh had no idea what i was doing to be totally <laughs> honest i i had no clue and i was just literally trying to figure out how to make the best music possible um, and do it consistently. 
and find the music that speaks to me the most. Luckily, um, I had been I had been working with a close friend of mine. Uh, he taught me everything. Um, he taught me a lot about uh, recording and all this stuff. And I made this song like a few years back and it was like a folk song. And he looked at me and he was like, brother, this is your sound. Like, I'm telling you, like, this is your sound. Like, and I was like, yeah, I just love it. Like, it feels right. Like, I never felt like I had like a sound until like this, like kind of like folky sound came up. Yeah, um, that was like kind of like your main thing that you go for, but you sound like you're open to like kind of shift around a little bit and play with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, um, that folk sound, um, I, in the beginning, at least I was kind of like doing like pop songs. I was kind of doing like these, like, like these indie pop songs, like that I was like producing, like very, like poorly, honestly, um, these folk songs that I was producing very poorly too. And then these rock songs, which I would just find the the beats and whatever, like online or, and then some actually rock songs I, I produced too. Um, but uh what what really caught the attention was of was the was the folk songs and so my first song seven seas uh i think that was like the first one that really like caught attention yeah uh, and that was like my my fourth or fifth release or something and then what really caught the attention after like uh, like six or seven months was life's been boring and so um that was like really cool and like it was cool to see a good a great response on there because it was genuinely something like i couldn't even like like i can't even tell you how that song like happened and like it just happened like i was like i fuck i need a song for sorry i, I don't know if i'm allowed to curse but uh, <laughs> good. like i need a song like for for this week um, I found like the beat and um, and I was like, OK, I'm just going to record. I just literally freestyled like the entire the entire first verse. And then like I freestyled the chorus like and recorded it all. And then I was like, OK, this sounds pretty cool, whatever. Like, let's release it. And so then I released it. And then that was, you know, life's been boring. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I, you know, I made the cover art myself like on like Canva and it was just like, dude, like, what the, what, you know, what the heck? Like, this is crazy. Like, um, you know, obviously now it has like 10 million streams and whatever, which is really cool to say. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, dude, like, it was just it absolutely was wild. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. And like, I find like, um, for me, at least personally, when I look at people's songs, I try to like look into the lyrics because one, I just have terrible hearing in terms of lyrics. Um, always get it wrong so <laughs> but like I think a way to kind of tell when people start to kind of come into their own like I guess like skin for like as an artist is you kind of see that they balance out like the lyrics and they change over like songs and they become like this perfect balance between almost a little bit like it's relatable but it's also slightly abstract it's almost like this weird balance between being relatable but also like not exactly and then that's kind of like the sweet spot um sure. not yeah not to say like you know people who don't get like oh this is exactly me um but i find it's also your like the way the music like climatically like goes towards like it goes from like this kind of like almost like pent up energy then like kind of belts out like the chorus and i think that's what like life's been boring was a bit like because um the algorithm just kind of showcased that clip where it's pretty much just like the chorus but then you go and actually listen to the song it's like it's such a like a different combination which makes it really interesting I would say um do you have like a story behind it apart from like the beat coming to you was there anything else that kind of inspired you in terms of say like the lyrics like the first verse came to you pretty was there like a story in mind or like a personal experience or was it more like someone's experience or more like a story that you felt <laughs> um you know I think, uh, you know, this, this song is interesting because th maybe like subconsciously, like, you know, I feel like after, um, after, um, it's like a 
culmination of maybe like a bunch of a bunch of different experiences because like listen like you go through you go through heartbreak when you're young and stuff yeah. like that and you know there there are certain things that hurt you and that you know it, and that's really where I draw my inspiration from yeah. obviously now I'm like in a very happy uh relationship and I'm you know I feel very lucky um but um I think when uh when those songs were being made I like and when I make those like kind of heartbreak songs, which are the songs that I always took to, uh, which is why I make them because, you know, they're the ones that make me feel something. Yeah. Um, I think I always do take inspiration subconsciously. Um, like I said, I'm like a lot of times, like, like I'll be like freestyling or whatever. And just like, literally just be like, Oh, that's cool. Like, that's a, that's a cool line. Like I remember like freestyling, like, was it prom night or new year's Eve? like i remember that one and then like, was a starstruck or 17 i was like oh wow that's that's kind of hard like and i was like because you know that like i feel like everyone relates to being like you know 17 and just you know just being like you know in awe of someone and then just you know getting hit dirty or something like that you know um but i think uh, like what you say? um do you find just with those word choices in that like um in, uh, that like um improv moment you find they're like almost a little nostalgic as well for sure for yeah, sure very nostalgia inducing i would say for sure and and i think that's why a lot of people took to it like you know it's not like a super i don't know it's not like a super complicated song and but there's that like feeling of nostalgia in there which i think a lot of people take to yeah and I think a lot of people relate to. So maybe that's why I, I, to this day, I have no idea why that song was the one that like that, that blew up for me. Like, I, like, I really don't know. Like I, I even when I released it, I was like, Oh, okay. Like, I think this one's fine. Like I, and then like, it's always the songs that I don't expect that like end up doing like the best. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like it's, it's crazy to me, like, to be totally honest, like, and then the ones that I want to blow and I'm like, this one's it, this one's like, this one's going, it's like, just sink to the bottom. <laughs> so, what was one song that you think 100% was going to be it? Like one of the ones that you really think was going to be like the big one? I really love my song, A Poster Child. Like, I really fucking love that song. Like, that song is so good. Same, and also my my song, Red Eyes. Like, my song, Red Eyes, I think it's, like, it's probably one of my favorite songs that I've done. And maybe I just haven't promoted it the right way. But, um, I mean, that one just flopped. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, that one just sank. Like, and, like, I song, and that's what I've realized. Like, I released so much music that I'm, like, some songs just do super well. Um and some songs don't like, and like, like, that's just what it is. And you can't get hung up on it. Like you have to just, when you're in the game and you're trying to do it independently, it's really just a fucking, you know, next song, next song, next song, next mm -hmm. song. Like you can't get hung up on like these songs and like they do well, they do well. And like, not to say like a poster child is doing well, but I thought it was really going to like fucking, you know, do numbers and it didn't, but you know, it's, it, it does well, like, but it's just like not, like I expect it to be like like life's been boring level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I wouldn't say those two are like two songs that I listen to the most out of because like I went ahead and created, especially for this interview, I created the, like a playlist to like basically put in your music from like start like first song to last song, just so I can kind of like go through it and kind of feel the changes. Um mm -hmm. and I would say like it could be also those two songs were songs that I had to go back several times to really like tune into and like get behind the lyrics because like they're it's not that they're not relatable it's like they're very interesting and they're quite intriguing um but I think like life's been boring is like you can relate to it but you're slightly tuning out even then you can still kind of like I guess like relate to it and also like I guess topics around love is generally like people's favorite let's be honest I guess um and it yeah. is like a little bit more like other kind of depths to it like it's more like a niche target i would say um but it's interesting like life's been boring i would say like it came at an interesting time for me personally as well because i was also kind of feeling like you know like um i also had like a career ish kind of shift like from a place i was like 10 years and i was quitting it because i was starting to feel empty about it mm -hmm. um like 
it just makes me wonder like life's been boring like i think people maybe uh a lot of people are like doing things for the sake of doing things or trying to like just kind of keep their head above water so maybe like that title itself is also like a bit attention grabbing because they're like yeah that's like me right now yeah no, it's definitely an intention grabbing title for sure this is for really sure. the i'm like this is one of those songs where it's like so easy to find and you'll never be like type in a song and it has like six different artists with the same title okay. with like three different songs and you're just like oh i actually have to type in the artist for this one then but yeah I, I always ask my girlfriend for the titles so that's a funny that's a funny like little hidden like i never i'll never like title it till i'm like the song is done and then i'll text my girlfriend i'll be like what should i title this and she'll be like i been like i like life's been boring i was like okay like and then i'll just do that like or even for like the rep like every song actually she's she's the one that title i was also going to ask actually in related to like this creativity like um uh some of your more recent um like there was some of your covers, I guess, like the artist um, song, like what do you call it, the picture, the thumbnail, like the design, there was like a few simple like line designs, those ones. Um, did you do those or was it like someone specific you went to? Because for a while it was very consistently like using that style, right? Yeah, you mean, I mean, it's always me. I just do the cover art. Um, yeah. as, of, as of recently, I, I just started doing like, a recent photo that I took that I feel like somehow relates to it. Like, um, and then I'll just use that and then like kind of just put it in black and white yeah. and then I'll just put, like my lion symbol at the end uh, or at the corner of it. Um, and then that, that's just kind of it. I don't, I don't really think too much about the, um, about the, uh, the cover art because I kind of, especially after life's been boring, like I feel like that's like the worst cover art I've ever done. And it's like my number one mm -hmm. song. So I'm like, People don't listen for the cover art, to be totally honest. That's you know? true. Like, I mean, and they're probably coming from Instagram like me or somewhere else. So they're probably getting the full blown clip rather than like a picture anyway. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Definitely. But yeah, I think like your choice of artist profile art, like for Spotify is good as well. It's very brooding kind of like mood, kind of like really suits like, especially the way you describe yourself, like the introvert vibe, I guess, but like kind of like cool and ready to build out something i would say but it's a good choice thank um, you for my love just from my last experience um my one stops around like i think 30 minute mark usually so yeah no worries if you want we could you could just send me a new link if if we need more time or anything oh, like no, that it's, or okay. it's just um pretty just pressing forward stop and then like starting again just so that it's not mid-sentence of what you're saying. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, let me quickly check. Um, so like, let's say in terms of like music, um, like style, would you, do you have like, say maybe like a topic that you're recently like more inspired or like feeling strongly about that you kind of feel like writing about or do you have like a style or something you want to incorporate that you want to kind of try out? Like anything on your mind that you're kind of quite interested in working into? I want to start transitioning away from like this kind of like folk country scene because like everyone's doing it and it's kind of getting a little bit. You know, indie and folk is pretty big right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of getting like so oversaturated and just like everyone's a cowboy now or everyone's a this oh, and like the truth sure, is like. <laughs> What'd you say? I say after Beyonce, especially. Yeah, like it's just getting like everyone's a, you know, everyone's a cowboy now or whatever. So I'm just like, and I'm not even like trying to do like country music because, you know, you have to be country to do country. Like, like, you know, it's just the truth. Like, at least in America, like, yeah. like country music is so like, it's like you better be from like the country kind of thing or else it's like just kind of like feels off a bit. Yeah. Um. And so I, I never like that was never like my thing. Like I didn't I, I always wanted to be in like the folk like kind of category because that's where I feel like I fit um, and my music fits. Um, I want to start transitioning. And I've been kind of just like focused on like transitioning my music to like more of like this folk rock thing. And so my goal, I know this sounds a bit crazy, but I want to like do like I love ACDC. And so I want to like do more like 
stuff like kind of like rocky but like kind of with like this like americana this like like acoustic vibe but it still has like this acdc like influence from it i want to eventually get there and like start doing that and then start building like a sound out of that is my goal honestly and build like do like do that kind of like acdc like you know power guitar thing with like and then just incorporate like you know fiddles and like and like violins and like all this different stuff like it's kind of my goal honestly is to to do something like that and get and start getting more into the rock scene because my voice is very um it's very thick and like i've realized like i have a i have a good voice for like this like rocky sound so um that's kind of what my goal is honestly yeah i would say it's pretty diverse right because like you can use it in so many ways it's like it's so powerful but you can withhold it so that it's something more like brooding and like sort of like low toned almost but then you could also make it like fully like powering out so that's a really interesting mix i would say um Thank you. yeah and there's another song i really like i don't know um how it sits with you but like i keep running away that's another one of my favorites you can tell i have <laughs> um going on <laughs> but um like what was the inspiration behind that I, I have no clue to be like, again, that was like one of those Hail Mary songs where I'm just like, oh, I need I have a song. I need to put out a song this week. Uh, and then me and my, my friend comes over sometimes and he'll make music with me like he's yeah. he's he plays guitar a bit and he's a good songwriter. Um, and so he came over and he came with these like chords like the and I was like, oh, those are cool. And like he plays guitar in like a cool way. Yeah. So we his guitar and then like i built like the beat out and i just kind of sat on it for like a while and then i was like all right like i need to i need a song so i recorded the song and i was like this is fine like whatever like i don't you know i was just like whatever this is fine and then like i sent it to my friend and and i was like yo i'm, pu I'm putting this out he's like and then he's like bro call me and then, so i called him he's like dude that's so good i'm like i'm like you think so like you, you, he's like bro what the, like what did you do and i'm like i'm like i don't know i just i built out the beat i, I have no clue and he's like holy sh like he's like sorry i don't want to curse but he's like holy <laughs> shit bro like fucking he's like yo that shit is crazy and i'm like all right fine like whatever so i posted it and then it just started ripping like i yeah. was just i was so surprised like i was like i was like okay whatever like it's and so good like I think the first verse, like, I learn to love in only broken ways. Like, I, I remember saying uh, that. It's like, oh, like, I like that. That's really cool. The second verse was like, was more like, uh, like I was in the studio and I had everything like pre uh, written. And then I'm always like that on the second verse. I'm just kind of like trying to think of something. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, like, I don't even know what to say. And then I just freestyled and I was like, okay, that's fine and and then i just posted it and then and then we and then i finished it and that was pretty much it for that song but yeah that song does numbers too which is it's crazy i mean i don't even i literally the two songs where i'm like and like those are the songs you know like yeah. it's so funny. like for me i can particularly i can particularly understand this one because it's so it's the, it's the kind of i guess like the tempo and everything and the vibe of the song and also again it is pretty relatable um and yeah. it's like i would say the lyrics itself especially the chorus people could probably draw connections to like various kind of like situations in life because it's a bit more i guess it's a little bit more broad in that sense so people could listen in in like various kind of moods probably not that positive per se but you know probably on a sad kind of mood but it's just such a good song when you're commuting or something in the morning and just gets you going <laughs> no uh, damn i appreciate that Thank I'm you so much. In like the busiest time frame of the day where people are just like speaking and What'd you say? Sorry, you cut out. I said just trying not to like dance in like the middle of a train where it's like <laughs> the busiest, and, you know, just like, yeah, everyone, I got a moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, Damn, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, that's amazing. Um, I find it's also really funny. Um, I remember seeing the video that came with the song and then looking for the song, and in the video, apparently, you you were doing the spinning thing, which was, I was like, oh, that's cool. And I said that you almost like twisted your leg or something. 
Yeah. Yeah. That was like also like one of my first times like filming like actual content with someone. And so I was just like, I had no idea like what I was doing or whatever, but I was just like, whatever, like I just have to post some shit. And then like, yeah, like I, I like, I hurt my leg, like doing that, like whatever. And I was like, I was like, fuck man. Like this yeah, shit actually, hurt. Putting your content, I was like, yeah, oh, this is cool. And then be like, oh, this is funny too. Uh, thank you, bro. I, I really appreciate that. I'm sure Seriously. it would be very memorable too. It'd be like, yeah, I remember the first time I twisted my leg. Filming. Yeah. By the way, I have on my Zoom thing, it says like a minute and 19 seconds left. I don't, I don't know if that says that for you, but. Um, oh yeah, it does. Um, maybe. If you want, like it, when it ends, we can just, you can send me a new one on Instagram yeah. and I'll just log on to that or something. Yeah, like I would that. say it's because I'm not using the professional version. Yeah, no, mine's the same. same as, All right. Yeah. Uh, one sec. Um, all right, sorry about that. Uh, no, that's all good. Luckily, you pointed out. I actually didn't realize. I knew like there was some sort of timing, but I guess you do actually have to start a meeting once again. <laughs> I need a new one. Um, let me quickly check and touch something. Um, so uh, I think you a while ago you were looking for. Um, you were hiring someone, right? For was that for? I forget what it was for. Did you end up finding someone? Uh, yeah, I was looking to hire someone for you know, kind of just like an assistant. Um, I did, I did find someone. I found a, a lot of people actually reached out, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I found someone that wanted to work. Um, and then I, and then uh, it what they were no one really you know what the truth is is that it was like no one that like i um i didn't want to work with someone that i knew from back home or anything like that or like that i was friends with because but and they had to be local too in miami um for me because the thing was is that i don't want to have a problem with anyone that like you know i don't I don't want to have a problem with anyone that I know or that I'm friends with or anything like that. And the thing is, is that like, you know, at the end of the day, like if they're not doing their job, like this is a business and like, you know, I don't want to have to like be in that position where I'd have to fire someone or whatever, like a friend or anything like that. And, and so, um, and so, yeah, so I, uh, I, what I realized is that I kind of needed specific things. And so I, I was going to start working with this person. Um, and then I was just like, you know what, let me, instead of that, let me just outsource specific things rather than hiring someone full time. And so I, so like what I needed was like someone that can edit because the editing was taking a lot for me. And so I kind of like outsourced that. And then I needed someone that could, um, someone that could, uh, script so like i was talking with a friend who who's he's gonna script for me hopefully so um so yeah and so that's kind of uh what i realized instead of like wasting all this money on someone coming in day to day and like whatever like as helpful as that could be yeah. like it's really hard to find someone committed to only you and like really just involved, especially when they're, it's not, you know, their thing, it's, you know, my thing. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of what I was looking for. But um, I think the outsourcing right now makes the most sense. So that's kind of what I did instead. It actually sounds like a better idea. Cause like maybe that, would that be giving you like a better schedule in terms of everything that you need doing, like the task itself? Because I imagine someone doing a video editing job, like let's say like somewhat professionally, at least if they take on a job, they can give you an ETA on like, oh yeah, this job looks like it'll be giving me about three days worth of work. And then like, you'll be expecting it in three days. Um, and like giving it to different people, it's more likely that they all have like its own schedule that you can kind of line up because- it's, Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, it just makes it, it makes it more efficient. Um, okay. And it also makes it easier um, because- you know, a lot of times you just, you know, you'll go through like a bunch of emotions like doing music. And so a lot of times you'll be like, oh, like, I just want to focus on the music. But I'm also yeah. such a control freak that I'm like, no, like I want to focus on everything. And so and so I'll be you know, it's it's kind of hard for me to relinquish any control. Um, so, it's um, it. <laughs> what? 
it's an adjustment isn't it especially when everything feels like perfect but then at some point you really just gotta like i gotta like for sure. start for sure. even like even with like my manager like i i got like a manager like a few months ago and he's he's really great he's helped me a lot and like even with him like he's like okay I, like i'll handle this i'm like all right but like do it that you know i'm like i'm like trying to like i'm trying to like be involved and like funny you know it's just like but a lot of times it's kind of like just a headache to be involved in like day-to-day -day things that are just like yeah. so you can delegate to someone else so but like that's kind like, of I'm learning. i mean that's kind of a manager's job right in a way like they uh get used to your routine or get used to uh um, your like direction or things so that way they'll be like all right this is what's coming up but you know from the past experience this is how you like it are we going to do it this way kind of saves a lot of work in that sense and then the longer you work with that person i guess the more comfortable you'll be able to give away that sort of part of like your responsibilities without feeling like terrible about it for for sure yeah. no, no, for sure and at first i was like oh like like i was like can you can you do this for me like is is it okay and I, and then i was like oh like and he's he kind of was just like of course like dude i'm i'm your manager or whatever i'm like i i'm like uh okay like for sure and it, it was like it was like uncomfortable for me to ask for help because that's just how i am like i hate asking for help um but he's he's really great and he like whenever he never he always like you know helps me out and whatever so he's pretty cool and yeah but um it's funny like being like someone that you know especially in this business where like you know a lot of times like artists are kind of want to you know bend the knee or a bit or like you know relinquish a lot of the control to like the business guy or whatever like like just me coming from like a like a business background and whatever and like understanding like honestly not really having to rely on the music that I make for my money kind of put me in a different position so even when I talk with like record labels and stuff like that I could just tell them like honestly like you know they can wave money at me and like honestly it's I'm unfazed because you know I um, you know, I'm not in need of money, which which puts me kind of in a different position than most artists, in my opinion. Yeah, that is very interesting because, like, some people would probably go the route where it's like, I can't really do anything else, like, except music. But your background is more like you've kind of built a foundation first, and then you're working towards that, which is really amazing. But also, you have extra skill sets. I guess it's what people call like somewhat of like a fallback. Um, but that is good because that means you don't have to like give in to like people who don't respect your music um and you have that sense of like this is exactly what i want to do i don't have to consider any other options of like not like doing it um but it's good i mean you had to go through a lot in order to kind of actually get there so it makes sense to like fully go for what you want um but yeah that would be really interesting with also like the music that you're trying to work towards um in terms of also like you mentioned in your profile that you were also interested eventually working towards a band is that still relevant yeah i i do want i do want to start a band eventually okay. like a rock band um and that's always like a goal like a like a kind of like tom petty and the heartbreakers kind of thing like i would like to be like ryman and the whatever like some shit like that i don't know but but yeah that's that's always been a goal of mine i the thing is though is like when I do something I don't like to like half ass it so yeah. I don't I wouldn't like start a band like when I know I just don't have the time for it because like at the end of the day like I'm fully committed to the to to myself and uh and like my artist and then I have a bunch of other stuff going on yeah. so honestly it's it's super hard um but Scheduling i would eventually scheduling. like to start a rock band um once i'm like big enough and i can like and i can not really care about like building up my brand because it's already built up um yeah. um i would definitely want to start that and like help other artists that like want to be want to be in a big band or whatever or be with someone that's you know doing well definitely is has been a goal of mine for sure um you don't have to say it because you know some people don't want to give away their names but do you have a name in mind like or like some choice names for the band that you like just think about time to time Be like, yeah, like, um i kind of have like this mental uh i've kind of thought about a name burn the bridge home um and that's been my whole mentality uh when i make music um and i can kind of explain the story um i i watched i was 
I was, I don't know, reading something or, or whatever. And the story came up about these, these like warriors or whatever. And there was like a hundred of them and they were facing like a thousand other people and they sailed to this Island. And so, and they sailed to this Island, whatever, to conquer it or something along those lines. And uh, they had their boats and they could always flee back home. But the leader, what the leader did was um, in order for, for the, for the soldiers to go all in, he burned all the bridges. He burned all the bridge or the burned all the boats home. Um, so they weren't able to leave. So they, the soldiers all mentally realized like the only way out is through. And so they had to kill all whatever, like, I don't want to say like kill, but they had to, you know, kill all these people like, you know, and win the, win the battle in order to, to survive and get through. And so I always say like, burn the bridge home. Like you have to, be willing to like, like screw your safety net, screw everything and just be like, go all in on this, like one thing. Um, and I think that's really how you make things happen. And like, for me, like, it was like, it was like burning that bridge to like, to like, you know, the people in my society that like, didn't know I make music and we're going to think it's like weird or whatever. Going to think like these things, like I had to burn that I had to, you know, all this stuff. And so I always like, maybe thought of the idea of like burn the bridge home for like a name or something like that. Or like, I don't know, like I I've always like thought of That's thought cool. of a bunch of different ideas, but, but I like burn the bridge home for sure. Yeah, but cool. but we'll see. Yeah. Cause like, I was like, cause I'm an introvert myself as well. So I think like, that's also why I relate to your music a lot, but I feel like it's, it's hard sometimes when you feel like, do you ever feel like at the beginning of something when you're like relatively new to it and you're like, I want to do this, but then you kind of feel that need that I'm starting it, but it has to be perfect. But then you're like, oh, this isn't good. I don't like it. It's not at the level that it should be. So then you're like, keep backing out of it almost and then be like trying it again and be like, it's still not there. It's still not there. But you never really make the progress until you just fully give in and just keep producing it. For Which sure. Is, yeah. You, you have to. Because you're like, you For sure. Like, pushing yourself for that like on the time you have i feel like you have to be willing to look stupid um yeah and it's kind of like well if you if you want to do something great like you just have to you have to be willing to risk like certain things and like at the end of the day if you want to be great like you have to be willing to like look stupid in front of people and you have to be willing to fail like not yeah. to say that like not to say that you should i hate when like people are like up here and they're like oh like you should be like you're gonna fail like you're gonna fail so much like it's all part like it's all part of it like you you should fail like get ready to fail like you know yeah. all those like people like and it's really i think that's bullshit like you should never go into something and be like i'm going to fail and whatever but you should understand that like you know you you you, you like you have to put yourself in a position to lose like position to lose in order to win you know and so, and so that's what I think, um, when it comes to anything, like even with your podcast and stuff like that, yeah. like, I don't know how, how your story was and like how hard it was for you to, to do that and get out of your comfort zone. But like staying inside of your comfort zone is the worst, it's like the worst hell you could be in, in my opinion, because it's like, you're kind of like stuck here because you're kind of comfortable. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's like you, you, you're never reaching your full potential. And so like, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life kind of thing. So it's like, it's, it's important to be able to go get after what you're going after. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would say one of the most fulfilling experience in one's life is coming into your own skin, as I like to put it, like when things are right, whether it's like something you're wearing, like that you don't feel comfortable, but eventually you find what's right for you, whether it's like, a sense of like what am I doing with my life doesn't have to be like oh this is my purpose of life but it's like what I'm doing makes me happy or it gives For me sure. momentum you know like it's all the little things uh it's funny that you mentioned that as well I think um what you mentioned before the point is very similar to actually how you should approach like say relationships like as they say you have to be vulnerable to actually you know actually make a connection and that's the same thing if you're not like putting yourself out there you just can't like make the first step because you'll just constantly be going back and forth between the first step and like wherever you were um, for sure and like when i was in like kind of like a that kind of like mental headspace i used to call it the limbo 
I call it like the limbo space or like, you know, kind of like the gray space between places where you're just kind of like, you're not exactly sure where things are moving. They're not really up or particularly down, but you're just kind of like there. Yeah. Highs and lows are just kind of like, this is probably worse than being in a low because at least I know I'm in a low when I'm in a low. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you kind of just have to like work your way through. And also um, I wanted to bring up, this is like a really random fact I remember reading, but I just thought it was so interesting. Um, about like burning the bridge home it's actually also very similar to apparently I think it's bisons like uh, bisons or something similar to them there's like uh, one of the animals they actually when they see a storm coming they actually don't run away from it because they've actually learned over time and they pass that on I guess to generations but basically the herd when they see a storm coming they'll actually charge through it because they realize that running away from it eventually will catch up anyway so instead right this way is to charge through it and then they'll be done like in no time and i'm like how do animals realize this and we're like taking forever to like learn this? <laughs> yeah so, no so. for sure for sure that's i like that a lot actually yeah, gonna, really cool definitely keep that. it's that's tough cool. really, and i think like it's probably because it's so um yeah it's it's so uplifting um yeah um so that, Probably is most of the stuff I did kind of want to ask you quickly, just as like, I guess, like if any fans are listening or like 2B fans, I think eventually people will get interested. Did you ever consider like once you get to the point where you think it's suitable, are you going to do like, say, merch shops and, um, you know, some people even like put out like a real, I guess, physical versions of like songs into like CDs or like collectibles. Like, have you thought about any ideas of things along that line? Or is it like, would you say it's considered a little too early for you? Um, I've, I mean, I've thought about merch and stuff like that. Um, for sure. I don't think it's too early. I just like, I just don't really have like the mental like space, like, like just mentally to like start to start like another section of like the business. And like, and like, to me, it's like, as, as listen, like I know merch is very profitable and stuff like that. Um, and it can, it's a great like avenue for sure. I think that right now I'm just kind of like focused on like making the best possible music and That's then cool. like and and just finding like real connections with like with, you know, supporters and stuff like that, because um, that's what's important for me. Um, and that's what I realized, like. I I started making music like not knowing like I would actually have an effect on people's days and whatever and like I get messages all the time from people like just thanking me and like you know telling me how much like they made I made them feel better and it's like really restore it 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 changed like my purpose of making music a lot so like in the beginning I was making music more selfishly um for for myself just because um I uh you know, I wanted to do it for a living. I wanted to, you know, be able to, you know, just make music for a living. Like, like that would be crazy. And then, and I didn't really understand like the concept of like, you know, art, like helping other, like it just didn't like click with me of like being an artist that like, you know, you help other people. And then I just started getting like a flood of messages of people just being like, you know, you helped me like your music, like, like help, like save me all this stuff. And like, it was just like, it's very, it's, a, it's very emotional a lot of times. And I just, I'm very grateful for it. Um, And so that's kind of like where I want to drive my energy to and not like that kind of, not kind of like merch and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Because it feels a bit insincere to me, to be totally it's honest. Really Capitalism based. Yeah. Like it just feels, it feels a bit insincere. And like, I want to like, listen, like as, as definitely it's like an avenue and stuff, but I'm not here to like sell people. I'm here to just make yeah. music and like with people. And like, I, I hope that is, tra I always hope that is translated in like the person I am and like the, the content yeah. I create and the music I make. And that's always been like my like MO. So like, so for sure, like later down the line when I'm like touring and stuff like that, and I yeah, can like actually, yeah, like and I can do like, that, like just and, on the side, whatever. Like, remember and, like, like an event or something physically. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I think that would be like the best way around because it feels like there's a purpose behind the merch in a way. It's not just like, look, it's for sure. something related to me. For sure. And, and also I always wanted to, um, 
I don't know, like all the profits from that. I, I figure like I would always like do something cool with that and like give back somehow. Um, and that's kind of like how I see the music is like a, a thing of like giving. So like I always just wanted to like create avenues of like helping other people, um, because like I said, it's not like my 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 first income it's like something else so like whenever i can like help someone else and and you know better someone else or something like that that's always like important to me so that's kind of my goal i'm sure that's awesome so like it has given you a bit of a mental shift in like knowing like all these messages come through like yeah like you're really producing like in a different way then because I think like your music. Oh no, I'm not. I'm honestly not. I'm. I'm just making the music that 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 I feel like uh, affects me. Yeah, and I, and think like I feel like that translate. I'm never. I'm never making music to be like, oh, like I need. I need a hit, or like I need to make another sad song, or I need this. It's like it's literally always like about like, uh, what I'm feeling and like how I'm feeling in the present moment, especially because I go like from song to song. So like, that's always been like the thing for me. Um, and like, I never really, um, I never really am like focused on making like a hit because I don't feel like that's the way to make music. I feel like you're, you should just let like the higher power, the universe fucking speak to you and like, like translate through you a bit in my opinion. And like, that's how you should be making music because like it's a very spiritual process and like i feel like people that make music only understand are the ones that understand it yeah um and it's something that's just so powerful and magical like sometimes i'll be making a song and i'll just start like tearing up like because it's just like it was just so beautiful to me and like and like magical like it's just crazy so it's a it's a it's very interesting it's a definitely an interesting process like music just has such a power to transport your mood like in particular sure. your memories like it stimulates you much like kind of like i guess like how like when you're going through food or like a certain location it just immediately brings you back to that like kind of feeling for sure definitely yeah. that's what like so really I, I agree more. um cool uh so just one last question to wrap things up quickly um I assume, like, because, like, you know, I'm not a music artist myself. I have tried writing, like, lyrics before out of Norway, but, like, it's really, honestly, this is why I appreciate it so much, because I think it's the hardest thing ever. It's, like, you start off, and it sounds like everything is just, like, way too on the nose, or just, like, what the hell is this supposed to mean, and doesn't sound good, or something like that. It's, it's a lot of work, is what I'm trying to say, you know, like, maybe, like, a poet or something would have a better chance to, like, go from there straight to that, but, you know, you kind of have to, like, do that, but what I'm trying to get at is um, there would probably be a lot of young artists or people who are, you know, going through a sudden career change and want to get into music. Um, and it is probably in its own way a lot more challenging in this day and age with like a different, I guess there's a lot of things that could influence it and it's very different from how it used to be. Like there's too many channels, which is one good thing, but then there's also like that, that side where you have to work really hard with all of them. Um, because you never know where people are going to be like seeing you from as well like do you have any like what would be a good advice or like guidance from your perspective like what should they be more focused on or considered so that they can kind of put themselves out there like what would be a good advice i would give? say um because of how overwhelming it can be especially starting out as an independent artist yeah. is focus on doing one thing first um getting good at one thing uh first so like for me it was like the one thing i had to get good at was releasing music consistently and you don't really understand how hard it is until you start releasing music because just the the release itself is a it's a super overwhelming thing and you have to get used to like putting yourself out there um so for me at least it was like super hard for me each release and now it's just it's a piece of cake because I've just done it like 30 times where I'm just like next song next song next song but um for me it was like getting the habit of releasing uh every three weeks and getting good at at you know uh being consistent with that and so once I did that then then it snowballed. Then I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm good at like making music consistently. Let me start 
doing content. So then I started like doing content. And then I was like, okay, I'm doing content consistently. Like, let's make the content better. Like, let's start incorporating this. Let's start incorporating. And so a lot of people think you have to do everything at once. Yeah. When in reality, you should just focus on doing one thing, make it simple, and then expand outward. That's how things happen. And it's like a it's like a scaling thing. It's like it's it's a compounding effect. I'm sorry. So like that's how things should happen. And you another thing is never get competitive with other people. Um okay. is get competitive with yourself. Always try to outcompete yourself. And don't focus on the numbers because the numbers mean nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, focus on, you know, the the connections you make with other people in music because it's so beautiful. And music is such a beautiful thing. And a lot of times, including myself, I get wrapped up in, you know, the numbers. Oh, like this is going down. This is going up. Like I'm, you know, it's like your ego. You're battling your ego. But yeah. but in my opinion, um you shouldn't be focused on the numbers. And a lot of times I have to tell myself that like the numbers mean nothing. It's hard. Um, you know, it's, it really is about the connection with other people and that's what it should always be about. And, you know, the, your connection with the music first, and that's always what it's about. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like that's, that's my advice, honestly. I know that was like a bunch yeah. of things, but yeah. Absolutely. Do you find like also it helped build your confidence because like after you get used to something that you thought was so hard and then you just for sure. come to me now, then obviously it builds the confidence for you to go, well, this is the next step. I'm interested, but I'm also like kind of scared that at least I know it's likely that I'll get used to it because I got used to this. It's like a- For, for like sure. That's probably 100%. 100%. I think that that's a, that that's a great way to uh, build your confidence. Um is to uh is to get good at something like get get good at something because the minute you get good at something like it becomes like a piece of cake you get a bit more confident in it um and that's super important whether it be like releasing or like making content that is like you know actually you know interesting and stuff like that or whatever thing whatever thing you're doing like i'm sure your podcast get better by by each one or your clickbait, you know, like, uh, things that you post on Instagram get better each one. Um, I'm sure, you know, that's like an important thing. So, um, yeah, I, I will definitely say that. Just like what you said, like fine tuning everything, like finding what works for you and what you feel is most interesting. Cause like yeah. when you're not really getting paid for it and doing it more out of passion, which is pretty much the project, what it was about. Um, like I said, like this, podcast is basically um i'm trying to like, avoid burnout on one subject because it's just like you never have like that much to talk about just one thing every single day if you were doing it like on day in and out and yeah. people think about all sorts of stuff in their daily life so i think like this makes a lot more sense um and then you know that helps when you're not like really thinking about numbers and stuff then you can really remember to focus is what's interesting or what you feel like is important to talk about and for you know, sure. music is such a big thing for me. And like on my promotional clips, as I like to call them for each episode, is always like focus around whoever I'm listening to or feeling at the day. Um, so I always like to splurge at the end and say, like, oh, here's a music of the day, like the song of the day, and then just like try to get someone to listen to something that I'm listening to. Um, and hopefully, you know, people go out there and go, Oh yeah, this is a really cool artist. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. that, that's pretty much it. Um, it was a really, really good interview. Um, learned a lot about you and your music, which is really exciting. Um, so, yeah, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, not that I could think of. It was it was a pleasure speaking with you. Seriously, yeah. man, this is my first interview, so um, it was it was definitely something. It was a cool experience for sure. It definitely was for me as well, and connecting with artists stories and all that kind of stuff behind like the scene is i think what many people think it's really cool and given how many people connect with your music i think getting to hear like more of your thoughts they'll really appreciate it so thank you for the opportunity um have you haven't been to australia before right i'm based no, in never been there never been there. Uh, i like to take some shots of like things that i find like like scenes like beaches and stuff because i work near a beach um it's one of the popular ones here that isn't oversaturated with tourists but 
well known by tourists. Anyway, I've got like a bunch of shots of me and my place and also like where I work. Um, I'm gonna like upload it and I'll send you a link for it. It's kind of like just like nice views of um, the Harbour Bridge and stuff as a thank you. Um, but I'll send you a link later on for that. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank definitely. you so much. Just to give you definitely. a little. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I've always wanted to go there for sure. Yeah. Don't listen to too much of our rumors. Like a lot of stuff we like to make up because Australians love joking. Um, like oh, yeah. you can look that up later. That's a that's a thing that we use to um scare tourists. Um oh, yeah. but yeah, um otherwise right, thank you. And I'll let you get on with your day. I'm sure you have like some dinner plans and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah. I appreciate it all. Thank you so much, man. All it was right. a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah. Um hope to try it again soon sometime. All right. Have a good one. You too. Pleasure. See you.